Hello children. Today we are going to read something about the structure of the cell or cell structure. In this, actually each of the plant or animal cell, it comprises of the following parts. It consists of cell membrane. It consists of a central part that is called as nucleus and it consists of cytoplasm. Besides this, plant cells, they have a cell wall in addition which is very rigid and which is for support. Now, let us first discuss something about the cell wall. Cell wall is the outermost covering of the plant cells and it is an absent in animal cell. Outermost covering of plant cell and it is absent in animal cell. Uh, regarding the texture of the cell wall, it is very much rigid, strong, thick, porous, non-living structure and it is made of cellulose that is carbohydrate and hemicellulose. Actually the cell walls of two adjacent cells, cell walls of two adjacent cells are joined by layer called middle lamella middle lamella which is made up of calcium and magnesium peptide this was all about the structure and texture of the cell wall regarding the functions cell wall has following functions first important function it provides definite shape to the cell second important function it is providing a strength third important function it is permeable permeable for the entry of molecules of different sizes now this was all about the cell wall which was present only in plant cell let us switch on to the cell membrane cell membrane is also called as plasma membrane or it can be called as plasma lemma it is a limiting boundary of each cell which separates cytoplasm from its surroundings. It is found in both plants as well as animal cell and it is the outermost covering in case of animals and lies below the cell wall in case of plants. It is in fact made of proteins 60% lipids 40% where proteins are sandwiched between the bilayer of lipids. Uh, the plasma membrane or cell membrane it was named by a scientist named as Nagli. Plasma membrane is selectively permeable in nature. That means it will allow children only few solutes and few solvents to pass through it. In fact, there is a model or a structure which is very well defined by two scientists, Singer and Nicholson. They have given the model of the cell wall and that was called as fluid mosaic model. This was given by two scientists, Singer and Nicholson. According to this model, it consists of a protein layer sandwiched between the two layers of lipids, sandwiched between the layers of lipids and the thickness, about the thickness of the uh, plasma membrane, it, it is around 75 angstrom thick. It is very much flexible and it can be folded, broken and reunited. According to this model, let me show you diagrammatically. This model states that these are the layers of lipids, two layers of lipids. And these consist of proteins in between. And the thickness of this layer is this we can call as phospholipid bilayer. This is cholesterol. This is called as a peripheral protein. This is called as an integral protein. So, according to fluid mosaic model, these are the two layers of lipids which are 
sandwiching the a layer of protein some of the proteins are present at the periphery also which are called as peripheral protein and the proteins especially which are in between the two layers they are called as uh, integral protein now let us switch on to the functions of the plasma membrane regarding its function it regulates the movement of molecules of molecules inside and outside the cell it helps in maintaining the direct composition of the cell or in other words we can say in brief it maintains the composition of the cell now let us discuss how the transportation of molecules is done across the membrane transportation of molecules across the membrane is done by two methods first important method that is called as diffusion diffusion is what it is a movement of solutes or ions movement of solutes or ions from higher concentration to lower concentration and it does not require energy so it is called as a passive transport on the other hand the second important method for the transportation of molecules across the membrane that is called as osmosis osmosis can very well be defined as the movement of solvent movement of solvent or water from lower concentration from lower concentration to higher concentration of solution through a semi permeable membrane this is called as osmosis osmosis can also be called as a diffusion of solvents diffusion of solvents now osmosis is of two types it can be endosmosis or it can be exosmosis osmosis can be of two types can be endosmosis or it can be exosmosis endosmosis is the movement of solvent into the cell on the other hand exosmosis is movement of solvent outside the cell this is exosmosis now let us switch on to another sub topic that is protoplasm protoplasm is called as the essence of life because this is the only living substance of which cell is made it is called as protoplasm it was first termed by or the protoplasm term was given by perkinje perkinje was the name of the scientist in the year 1839 it is actually a viscous colorless fluid viscous colorless fluid which is a site of all physiological reactions it is also called as a physical basis of life physical basis of life protoplasm can be differentiated into two regions the first is called as a nucleoplasm and the other one is called as a cytoplasm nucleoplasm can be very well defined as protoplasm of the nucleus on the other hand cytoplasm is called as a extra nuclear protoplasm this was about the protoplasm next we are going to discuss a very important component of the cell that is called as a nucleus let me draw its structure first actually it is a double membrane as looks like this it consists of a central portion that is called as a nucleolus plus it consists of chromatin network thread like network in it 
this is the double membranous structure let me label the diagram on this small dot like structures are present these dot like structures are ribosomes which are present on the outer membrane of the nucleus this is endoplasmic reticulum this is the outer membrane this one is the inner membrane this portion round portion is called as nucleolus which is responsible for the production of ribosomes this is the chromatin network which is made up of dna and rna and histone proteins as well these minute structures these are called as ribosomes these pores which are present in between <coughs> these are called as nuclear pores so this is how nucleus we can draw in a most simple manner let us discuss some points it is a most important part which directs and control all cellular activities it controls all cellular activities it is called as headquarter of the cell it was discovered by robert brown in the year 1831 in eukaryotes a well defined nucleus is present nucleus is well defined on the other hand in case of prokaryotes well defined nucleus is absent prokaryotes contain a primitive nucleus in fact this not well defined nucleus can also be called as a primitive nucleus now actually uh, it has a double layer covering the double layered covering of the nucleus is called as karyotheca double layered covering is called as karyotheca nuclear membrane has some pores which are called as nuclear pores these pores regulate the movement of materials regulate the movement of materials in and out of the cell besides nuclear membrane nucleus also contains nucleolus nucleolus is uh, responsible for production of ribosomes nucleolus uh, besides nucleolus it also consists of chromatin material this chromatin material it consists of a substance which is filled inside or a uh, chromatin material the substance filled inside the nucleus is called as a nucleoplasm this nucleoplasm can also be called as karyolymph lymph means fluid and karyo means related to nucleus chromosome or chromatin material in fact chromatin material consists of dna chromatin network consists of dna which stores and transmits heredity information for the cell to function grow and produce let us talk something about the functions of the nucleus there are major two important functions or role played by nucleus first is it controls all the metabolic activities of the cell second it regulates cell cycle third important function it helps in the it helps in transmission of heredity characters characters from parents to offspring from parents to or these were the few important roles played by nucleus now we can distinguish cells on the basis of organization type of organization present in the cell so these cells can be called as a prokaryote prokaryotic cell or it can be called as a eukaryotic cell regarding prokaryotic cell we are going to read out some characteristics or points of differences prokaryotic cell consist of incipient nucleus on the other hand eukaryotic cell it consist of a true nucleus second point of difference nuclear membrane 
and nucleolus absent in prokaryotic cell on the other hand nuclear membrane and nucleolus are present third important point of difference in case of prokaryotic cell histone proteins are absent on the other hand histone proteins are present here fourth point of difference since mitochondria is absent in prokaryotic cell so the respiratory system is present in plasma membrane respiratory system in plasma membrane on the other hand here respiration takes place inside mitochondria next point of difference actually the membranous cell organelles that is golgi body endoplasmic reticulum er chloroplast mitochondria lysosomes they all are absent here in case of prokaryotes on the other hand they all are present membrane bound cell organelles if i talk about the ribosomes ribosomes are present in both but in case of prokaryote 70s type of ribosomes are present and in case of eukaryotic cell 80s type ribosome is present so this was all about the difference between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell thank you children in the next lecture we are going to discuss some important cell organelles thank you so much